hello everyone welcome back to my channel programming with a purpose i am going to show you how we can create interesting animations to bring our apps to life so basically there are two animations that i am going to show you in this video first is this zoom animation and another one is basically this loading of a screen animation so let's see how to create these two animations first we are going to add a view to our existing project with the name of zoom animation so here our default view is created with the text hello world we are going to add a color blue to it so that it covers the complete screen after that i am going to add an overlay that is basically going to add the view on the top of this blue background so first i have created a v stack and i am going to add a text here with the title zoom and a font and then a font weight with bold a foreground color with white so this is how our text will look like so here I'm going to add a variable inside this zoom animation struct which is basically of the name scale and of the type CG float and it has a value of 0.8 so I am going to add a scale effect here which is going to be animated with the scale value that I have added as a variable here so on the pair I'm going to call there a function with the name of start scaling. So I've set the scale to one initially and then I'm going to create an animation now here. So I have scheduled a timer with a time interval of 0.1 with and repeats is set to true. So this timer is going to schedule our animation and in the body we are going to add this with animation function and we are going to add a block of code here which is going to handle this animation so if scale is less than 2.0 we are going to increment the scale otherwise we are just going to invalidate the timer which means that our animation will stop so so here i have added the zoom animation view inside my content view and as you can see here that no animation is working and just a zoom is printed on the screen so i need to fix it i've added scale variable here and now the animation is scaling with a certain scale according to this start scaling method so here i'm removing the v stack and i'm going to add another variable here with the name of is text hidden because we need to switch between an image and a text so here I have created this variable to hide this text so can we can move to the next image so here I am creating the image if the text is hidden we are going to display this image and this is the image inside the assets that I have added I am going to add the link of this image inside the description box so it is resized and scaled according to the dimensions and on appear what will happen to this image is then basically another animation which is applied to this image so here there is a small error which will be fixed when i add a v stack on the top of this if else so this error is fixed so our zoom animation is has started to work now we have set is text hidden to true which means that the image will be then displayed so you can see here the image is displayed without any animation but we need to add some of the movements inside this image so that it looks more better so here i am going to basically add a scale effect which is going to basically scale it up to a certain value if it's scaled is set to true so it is initially set to false and we have to switch between 1 and 0.8 if there is no scaling 0.8 is applied otherwise one is applied so here with animation i am going to basically upscale this image with an animation of dot spring so the response time is 0.5 it, it means that all the scaling will be done in this duration 0.5 and a damping fraction is provided which is 0.2 more the damping fraction the less will be the movement inside the spring animation and then i've added a delay of one second so here i have toggled this scale is scaled variable so here you can see here that the zoom animation is played so i have decreased the delay so that 
it seems to be more smooth and I'm going to add a damping effect of 0.5 so that will be le less spring effect in this animation. So next I'm going to add another file for the other animation which is basically the loading animation. You can apply this animation whenever you are loading something from the data or from your mobile. So here I'm going to show you there is a text with the text completed and a font. Font is basically of type custom which is uh, from the font chalk duster and the size is 36. Then I've added a font weight of dot bold here. I'm going to add a foreground color here with the name orange so this is the text that we are going to display once the loading is completed you can type here any other message but i've added the string of completed here i'm going to add another variable here with the name of offset y it is going to move this text upwards to make it a bit more animated so here i've added the offset here so on appear i am going to basically write something to animate this text so i am writing an asynchronous block of code here which is going to be called after async of 0.1 seconds so let's see what this async block of code is going to do with our text so it is going to add a with animation and inside the with animation function the block of code will be basically subtracting the offset from our current value with the in decrement of 50 so it means that the text is going to move upward so you have seen that the animation is working fine next we are going to create the other animation which is basically loading a value and a loading text with uh, an animation of the dots is appearing so we are going to create it and then we are going to toggle between these two animations when our loading is completed so here I'm going to create a struct uh, with the name of progress bar which is going to extend our view. So we are going to create a custom progress bar. The progress bar that is present inside the Swift UI with the name of I guess progress view is not customizable in the terms of bar height and color. So we are going to add this uh, custom progress bar which we are going to customize according to our needs. So here it is, it is going to basically consist of a geometry reader and there is a z stack so z stack is basically one rectangle and another rectangle is basically encompassed inside that rectangle with the color that we have mentioned inside this progress bar so you can see here that the first frame is equal to the geometry dot width and its height is basically given by the variable bar height with the opacity 0.3 so here i am basically displaying progress bar inside the preview so we are able to see that how it will look like so i've added some default values here so this is the gray bar that we have created up till this point so we have added a foreground color of dot gray next we are going to add another rectangle its width will be according to the value that we have passed inside this progress bar So it will be multiplied by the geometry width and then a height of bar height is set and the foreground color is set according to the bar color which is orange. So it means that this is the kind of the view that is created by this struct progress bar. So next we are going to use it to create a small progress bar inside our UI. So first we have created a V stack and then we have created a progress bar with a bar height of 20 color dot orange and then a frame so basically to limit its width so here i am passing a private var progress values to pass this value inside this progress bar because we need to animate this progress value we need to have a variable according to it so here i've added that and i've added a frame width of 200 so it is giving me some errors uh, the issue is basically with the type of the variable progress value. So I've added it an annotation of float here. So now you can see here a bar of 20 height and a certain width is shown here. 
and I'm going to create a corner radius here and you can see here that the top edges are curved but the bottom edges are not curved so we need to add a frame here so once we have added the frame you can see here that the view is looking proper so I've removed that frame of 200 from inside the progress bar so we have customized uh, the progress bar inside a V stack so it is looking perfectly fine If you add the direct corner radius and frame of width and height to progress bar, it will not look the way we want it to look. So we have added a V stack on the top of it. So after that, I am writing a function start animation bar, which is going to animate this bar for us. So it is just like a timer that we have set according to our duration of animation. And after that, in the width animation, you have seen that I am basically incrementing the progress value with the step of 0 0.01 so if you increase the time interval it means that those steps will take a lot of time but if you want to speed up the animation you need to decrease the step size so I've changed it from 0 0.01 to 0 0.1 so you have seen here this is how the animation will look like now I am creating another V stack on the top of this V stack so that we can add the text of loading here with animating dots you can add basically a percentage of uh, the data that you have uploaded or downloaded in the place of this text of loading as well so here i'm creating an eight stack which has the text of loading here i'm copying it from the top so that it has all of the properties that we have used in the completed text so i am decreasing its size to 28 And I'm adding a frame to it. Why I'm adding the frame to it, I'm going to show you in a while once I have done completing this H stack. So there is a text. And that text will be an array that will contain the position and basically the number of dots. So here I've set the font as dot title. I'm going to create a variable here in fact two variables here so basically the first variable is the current index that will help us to basically switch between different elements of an array and next is the text array so this text array will contain all of the dots that we want to iterate and display with this loading text so this is the condition of the dots that we want to iterate over. So I've set also the progress to 0, 0.0 here. So let's add this text.array elements here with the value current index. Okay. Now I'm going to write another function that is basically with the name of start animation text. And that function will appear on the dot on appear of this text. And we are going to basically change the current index using this timer function and with the with animation function. So we are, in the previous function, we are updating the progress value. Here we are going to update the current index. And also I have changed the timer interval to 0.5. So it is updating the current index here between all of the values that are present inside it. So let's start the animation and as you can see here, the dots are animating perfectly. So if I remove the frame, you can see here that with each of the animation, the loading text is also moving. So to basically make it fixed at a certain position, we need to add a certain frame to it. So the frame is basically needed to fix loading at a certain position so that the other three dots can move. So now I'm adding here another statement, which means that if the progress is completed is greater than 0.99, that we are going to then display the completed text. Okay, now this is basically the complete animation. So I hope you are able to understand how we have built these animations and what steps or what requirements are necessary to build these kind of animations. 
so here i am playing this animation inside the simulator so this is all for these two animations i hope you have enjoyed building them and they'll be useful in your next applications that you want to build using swift ui so this is all for this tutorial i'm going to add some further videos to this series of animations i hope you have enjoyed this content do not forget to like and share this video subscribe to my channel thank you for watching